Welcome to the CCO pre-show and band discussion for episode 459. 459? 459. Yeah, we're, we're doing a double here today. We're going to do the CCO pre-show. We're going to get warmed up and loose, but we're also going to talk about some of the stuff that people have been asking us about for the better part of the last two days now. I am so loose. Loose. Yeah, and sweaty. Hey, it's, yeah. it's hot out and we didn't shower before yeah. we came here. I haven't had time to shower or shave or do anything since the ban announcement happened because all I've been mm. doing is responding to people on the internet. Mm. Oh, Because yeah. that's how, that's what I do. <laughs> In my mind only, of course. Because... I got one, I got one, I got one. Oh. Look, at, I got, uh, I got this. Uh. So it makes it difficult to shower. So I uh, shower as infrequently as possible in true um, Magic the Gathering fashion. Yeah, see, I also shower as infrequently as possible, but that's just because I don't want to. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. did you hear the news? You what? probably did. Yeah, I, I caught wind of it. Cock slide extortionist. Yep. Uh, jeweled butt plug. Yep. I'm going to call it Mana Cry and cut off that PT. Sure. Mana Cry. Yep. And... Toucan Sam. Toucan Sam. Band. All banned. Toucan Band. Did you ever play against Toucan Band? I did not. Not me either. Not one time. <laughs> not one time. I can imagine, though, it being miserable. I feel sad that all those people won't get to have their Toucan Sam altars, though. There is for sure one guy that has a very nice Toucan <laughs> Sam altar, and I'm sorry. <laughs> now, there's, there's at least two. And, you know, they're, everybody's sorry. But yeah. There it is. Well, and you know, you know, it's not like they're not cool pieces of art still. Yeah, it is very cool. And it's a high quality altar and it's fun. And you could play it in Commander Cube or you could play it in regular Cube. I'm sure that regular Cubes have equipment that equip for zero. And that card, Nadu, winged whatever his name is, would still be good in Cube. I'm sure Lightning Greaves and Shaku are probably in. Not Shaku. Yeah, you know the Shaku, one. Is yeah. that the one? Yeah, yeah. That's the one they're just well, in there? And and as if those are the only two equipments in Cubes, and as if those are the only two equipments that are good with Nadu. Nah, that's... <laughs> because, oh, oh, come on. Uh, uh, oops. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about Nadu for a little bit. The the lead designer for Mari Ho Ho admitted that Nadu was a mistake. They changed it last minute to uh, to make it more appealing for Commander. So every card and legend and, and powerful, interesting throwback or thing could ha- find a home, right? Do you think maybe he was like, do you think Nadu was a racist? And they banned those other three cards that everybody talked about those ones and just, everybody just forgot that Nadu was there. Just talking nothing but politics and religion all the time. Mm. And so they banned the other three cards so people would take their eyes off the Nadu ball so they wouldn't um, know that they just unleashed no, this horrible no, because cartoon Nadu's, human. Nadu's already banned in other formats. Oh. And you know what? Like, I've never played against it, but I have played with and against decks that play like Nadu does. Take a look at... Zadahedron Grinder, for example. Non-deterministic. I might not actually win this game if I don't draw enough cards or if I whiff or if I run out of mana drops or rituals or if I don't draw into like a dedicated win con. And like you've played against my Zada deck where people have to like tick down or tick up Dice. two different D20s to tell me how much colorless mana I have and how much red mana I have floating as I go through the turn. And then I try to like infinitely speed run a dungeon to try and take advantage of one room. So every six times I dungeon, yeah, you want I, everybody. I, I get like somebody for one damage and that makes me one mana and mm-hmm. I draw one card. It's like, ugh. Nadu's the least exciting card on this list. But let's be you honest. can see why. You can see why yes, it no, was banned. And the, the I would say the second most, least exciting card on here, mm-hmm. Dockside Extortion. Okay, let's move on to that one. Let's save the cherry on top yeah. with the last two. Yeah. I'm going to say, mm-hmm. and I, I, hot take maybe. Mm, probably not. I don't care that Dockside was, was banned. Ah. It, 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 I played it in eight decks. Okay. And here's why I played it in eight decks. I played For the most two. part. I played it in eight because I had eight. Yep. I opened them and had them and stuff. I was actively searching for them because I play a lot of red. Yeah. And Dockside Extortionist is a great way to play, in my case, your five or seven or nine or 11 drop commander because they Mm -hmm. keep dying. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to bring yourself back into the game. So I just used that as like a really easy catch up thing. 
And so when he got banned, I'm kind of like, oh, this fucking sucks. But, mm -hmm. but, but I cut the, <laughs> You so, didn't read the rest of the article well, yet, and you just saw yeah. that Dockside was banned, and you were like, okay, I can see that. I can see that coming, right? I get And, and they'd been talking about it for a long time, right? Like, yeah, it wasn't there's, a surprise. Yeah. There's and, been definite conversations for a long time when you talk or, or listen to any CEDH content or just the general goings on of the magic verse. <laughs> this card is so good, and it's the backbone of red in nearly any tuned or powerful or CEDH style deck so much so that it like, like it's combos outside of red. Like, yeah, everybody yeah. knows yeah. the deck that I'm the most sad about losing it in mm -hmm. Brutoclad. Oh yeah. I think that Brutoclad might be my tightest list that I have. Cause you make treasures yeah. then the treasures turn into seven dwarfs. seven dwarfs. Yes. It's so, it's, it's so good, right? It's my, my blue, red crater hoof behemoth. Like it's so good. Mm. The other decks, like it sucks to lose it and. We'll talk about value later on, like the, the money part of it. Yeah. If even like well, it's worth mentioning. Yeah. It is for, worth yeah. mentioning. You but, know what? I have to remember for me, I suppose I should have said that at the top. For me, the monetary change or or difference post ban and pre ban doesn't matter to me. And and we'll get into that when we talk about that. Yeah, but it, I, I think it goes to it, it's important for us to say that for you, it does matter. Yeah. For me, it does not matter. Yeah. And for that reason, I am a lot less passionate and more apt to just kind of carry on. And we've got the article in front of us, like the banned and restricted update yeah. from September 23rd. For me to just read it and take it at face value that this is the reasons and to read what the RC put out, the Commander Rules Committee on mtgcommander.net and on Twitter, you know, all the people and most of which I know to read it and take it at face value and say, okay, well, those are the reasons and move on. Mm. Take Dockside out of my deck. I, I had it at Animar where I did dirty, rotten, broken shit with it, like bounce it infinitely and just make it mana and dump it into a walking ballista. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I played it in my Cascade Super Friends deck just because I had a second one. Yeah. And I just wanted to like, oh, it's my Cascade two drop. That'll maybe make me five mana that I can play another Cascade spell with. There you go. Yeah. So... We both probably did dirty, rotten things with it. Yeah. And, and we both also did regular stuff with just it. Just regular, casual magic stuff. No, people have a hard time. Oh, Dockside, that's like a hundred dollar card. I said, no, when I got it. No, I got it in a pre-con. Yeah. I got it in the Savine pre-con because I wanted to play Pramicon Petitioners. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those, I don't know, the Dockside one didn't hit as hard as Crypt and Lotus for me. And yes. those are the ones I think, A are the ones that people are actually mad about. Yes. And there's... For a, 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 new, a, a, a bunch plethora, of different reasons. A plethora reasons. of reasons. And there's, nuances within those reasons, yeah, right? It's like top down, okay. face value. What makes me... The thing that upsets me the most is these were things that were like 10th anniversary presents for people that I know. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. waited in line instead of... They, they flew to a city, mm. then spent eight hours waiting in line then picked up this card that mm -hmm. they traded basically their entire trade binder for to get this card that is now, it's not, not worthless yet, but the free fall as of today when we're recording hasn't stopped, <laughs> right? Like it could go all the way down to no dollars. Like it could be legitimate bookmark, coaster, interesting oddity that you'll show your kids one day and say, this is what it did. And the old... Oh, Grandpa, that's such Let's a... Let's get you back to the home, Grandpa. That's a crazy card. Like, what, what did you do with it after it got banned? <laughs> I, Fucking nothing. I do that with Brando now. Okay, Grandpa Brando, let's get you back to the home. <laughs> did you remember your medicine today? I sure did. That's why I'm not lit up and on fire right now from being pissed off. And the, 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 but the thing with these ones is, these two cards, Mana Crypt and Jeweled Lotus, mm -hmm. for years since they've existed have done exactly what they were printed to do mm -hmm. and exactly what people said they were going to do mm -hmm. in exactly the kind of decks that people said they were going to do them in. And it took them years with no upfront conversation with anyone to just wipe them out. And that's not a financial thing, even though... These are things that people trade up into. They trade all their $5 rares that they open in a box. They trade all these things. They save up some money. They go out and they buy this card that they need to finish off a deck. And these are things that go in every deck that... 
Okay, hold on, hold on. That are, You're lost for words for a minute. Let me interject with two things, and then I'll give you the platform back. Okay. Two things. The first one is they go, you said that they go in every deck. You you just said that. that and, and I'm not trying to trap you. I'm just, I'm, I'm working out the nuance here because there's a lot to be mad about and there's a lot to understand at the same time. Yeah. And through understanding, we can kind of knock all the sharp corners off how we feel about this, hopefully. That's my goal today. Yeah. Okay. And I know you don't like knocking sharp corners off. I'm a sea urchin. Yeah. Okay, so they go in every deck, but you also said they go in the decks that you think that they go in. And, yeah. And, and it's like, okay, is that like the high-end competitive decks? Or is it every deck? Because they go in well, both. They can go in every deck. Yes. But typically you'll only see them played in... The, because Commander is a social format, and the social, at least in my experience, the social mechanics that have been set up by the community mm -hmm. will typically play them in higher power decks or in ones where again the, where i played them was my commander costs a thousand and it dies a million that times. was going to be my next question and this will let me power them out. i played them in coma i played it in oh three right like i play them in things that cost seven and nine to get them into play well all three cost five at some time yeah okay yeah but oh three also costs nine because it dies yeah because it's a three three so yes and the rules committee had stated that the explosive turns off the start like the ability to with these cards in your opening hand consistently untap on turn two with five mana combined with the increase since strixhaven of the mid game card being very high power and accelerating past the beginning part of the game has changed how these cards changed where these cards are being used to their greatest effect. And when, <clears throat> when you look at th that kind of development in the, the landscape of Commander, mixed with Jeweled Lotus being reprinted in Commander Masters and Mana Crypt being reprinted several times, it's not like <clears throat> they're less expensive, but more people have them because they open them in booster packs. And when they open them in booster packs, they're they, happy. They're happy. And they don't just put them in their CEDH deck, right? You had them in non-CEDH decks. So yep. did I. And when you say things like, uh, they're only relegated to CEDH, so they don't matter, but everybody plays them in casual anyways, because, and, and I've heard this rhetoric, rule zero is dead. It's bullshit. It doesn't solve anything. Then we get the situation that we're in now where everybody's lots of people are running mana crypts and jeweled lotuses in their very casual decks because they have them because they open them yeah and it's an issue now and they're not trying to make it an issue and they're not trying to pub stomp or roll over on people playing casual and i'm playing cd so i can win prizes we're not in calgary <laughs> yet yeah but it it's just become part of the landscape of the format, right? It's like they've just become a weed in casual commander's side because the rules committee and 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 whether you like them or not, that's not this conversation, but the rules committee stated that they want to cultivate longer games because they feel that that's better for the format. Let me hit you with this. Okay. I don't care what they think. Okay. It's not their job to think. It's not their job to cultivate the kind of format that they think people should have. Well, I'm a believer, and if you're going to say this is a, a social format, yeah. this is, a, here, I'm going to give you an example, okay? okay. Uh, uh, is this annoying? Uh, is yes. This, is this irritating? Oh, it's like a jeweled lotus. Do you want me to stop? Yeah, it should be banned. Yeah, what, what should, what, how do you get me to stop doing this? Uh, do you, I, I banned would, jeweled lotus. Would you ask me politely to stop? Please stop doing that. Look at that, I stopped. <laughs> Or would you call the police and try and have me arrested for doing that? Because mm. that's what's happened here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Okay, okay. People in their playgroups or in their stores see people playing these cards and all oh, the games are over too fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't keep up. Oh, I don't, I don't have access to these cards. Fair point. Mm. Fair points, all. But they complained to a governing body, so the governing body banned it because some people complained that some games were ending too quickly. And I think that that's a pardon my language, a bullshit reason to ban a card. I, I really do. Especially when they are 
higher end quasi staples that could be solved with massive reprinting on the company side. Mm -hmm. And we're I, not there yet I, though. We're gonna we're, we're not quite there yet. I'm gonna tease it. Okay. All of this lands squarely on wizards. Are Ooh. some are some players complaining very vocally to at the at the grassroots part of this situation? Yes. Is the RC making a vast sweeping ban that hurt stores and players and collectors. Are they a part of this conversation why people are so angry? Absolutely they are. Do they deserve some heat? As a committee, yes. Individually, no. Because they're still humans and they're good people trying to do what's right for everybody. I and like that part. And especially, like, but, but I, I'll pile on to yeah. that, even though there's so many things I, I have to say yeah. and, and you're saying so much yeah. that I'm forgetting my points. Good. Knowing... Like actually meeting and being friends with multiple members of the rules committee and the commander advisory group or the CAG, C-A-G, if you see that anywhere. Okay. It's another group of kind of RC underlings that also help manage the format and intake and broadcast information to and for the RC. Knowing those two groups of people, don't come after them. And don't don't say things about what you think their position or what should happen to them. That that is bad. And I don't think that anybody no. in CCO Nation does that. And I certainly haven't seen anybody in our community no. do that. No, I've seen a lot of it in the last few days. But, but man, alive, yeah. man! But just lay off them as people. The, the, you can hate the decision that they made as a group, but you can't really hate them because it's not any individual yeah. human that did this. The people that you can shit on is Wizards of the Coast because this is their fault, a hundred percent. And I'm going to tell you why I think sure. that is. If you look at, and this is the big heated argument right now, possibly because, you know, my fun isn't your fun or whatever, is Sol Ring, where everybody's like, well, why don't they ban Sol Ring too? <laughs> it's right just as brutal. And the thing is, the reason that they shouldn't ban Sol Ring isn't mm -hmm. because it's iconic to the format. It's not... Everybody has access to it. Mm -hmm. I think that if everybody, if you opened a Mana Crypt and a Jeweled Lotus in every single Commander Precon and everybody had access to them, I would be willing to bet that we wouldn't be sitting here right now. I think you're probably right. Because... Can, like, can I take that a step further? Sure. Just Just for five seconds. Sure. Give me, also give me free instant speed removal that says destroy target Jeweled Lotus and destroy target mana crypt or uh, like a well, one they, drop enchant artifact that says mana crypt deals double damage to you. Sure. And I enchant you with it. Sure. Give me, give me those cards and solve that problem when every single precon has a jeweled lotus and a mana crypt in it. And fuck, nay, stop printing soul rings and precons for four <laughs> or five years and only print mana crypts. Yeah. Or just do, in my head, like if I had a magic wand and I could wave it around. Every commander deck would come built exactly as it is right now, mm -hmm. instead of coming with that bullshit commander or super pack preview thing that has two cards in it. Or, or the thick, the thick daddy uh, yeah. commander. Fuck all that. You get a white bordered, what's it called? Mana Crypt. Yeah. And a white bordered Jewel Lotus. Yeah. With a little like generic set symbol on it. And then everybody has access to the card. And they, they're not in the deck, but if you want to tune your deck up to play a little bit higher, you can take those, mm. you can cut a couple of things, stick them into your precon, or do whatever like you want. Like the customizable precon we talked about like on last week's show or exactly. whatever, Exactly. Right? Then everybody has one, and I feel like that would... I'm not saying that this is just a bunch of butthurt people that didn't want to buy expensive cards no. and wanted to ruin the fun of the people that either opened them or took the plunge and got them. Because that's not what this is. This is just a... It's a amalgamation of shit that just built up and came out, I think, in a really well, poorly it, thought it out is, way. It is also that because nobody was complaining about Soul Ring needing a ban. Until and this happened. In, uh, until this happened. And they said, well, wait a second. You said uh, Soul Ring's the same as Mana Crypt. Ban Soul Ring too. Right? Well, if that's, the, if that's your fucking argument, ban Dark Ritual and ban Jessica's Will and ban Pyretic Ritual and ban, ban, like, ban all those cards too. Ancient Tomb. Right? Ancient Tomb. Oh, I, I had yeah. that one listed. Yeah. The Party Tree. Yeah. Now... Uh, like any, if, and if it's about making people feel bad that they lost games, maybe they should ban Crater Hoof Behemoth and Cyclonic Rift. And, and okay, now you know, we're... And, and we now can, we're getting hyperbolic. It's, it's but, easy to be inflammatory. Okay, yeah. I want to go way back. But way we're not doing back. any of that stuff. I want to go way back and, and ask you if, if policing fun and banning cards and making the format fun for people isn't the RC's job, what... 
is their job, or if, if that's an impossible question for us to answer because we're not them and we don't have a strong enough understanding of that, what should their job be in your eyes? In my eyes? I don't think they should exist. Oh. And I've always thought that. I don't think that these people need to exist at the level that they do, especially when they say, this is just a suggestion, this isn't official, but then mm. when you go on a deck building website, they still tell you that your deck is illegal. And if you're playing in the CEDH tournament in Magic or Command Fest Toronto. It, well, fuck that. When you go to a local store and, and you, you try and play, yeah. you can't use them because... The, They're banned. The suggested thing from this group that doesn't officially control the rules controls the rules. And I don't think they should be there in any case. I honestly don't. I know that you've said that in the past, and I, I want to make sure that I say that to, to the people listening, because it's easy to... Yeah, I'm not just saying that now. <laughs> yes, it's easy for somebody to hear that and say, oh, fuck, you're just saying that. You're just saying that because you had nine cards that come out of decks that used to be worth $200. Fifteen. Fifteen, sure. Yeah. Okay, so if if you think that they shouldn't be a, a, an entity or an organization or, or governing body, you think that WotC should just do it. Yeah. And and just handle bans like they do for modern or standard like, or whatever. The, like this RC should be like, just like a part of the wizard's net. Even if it's the same people, just have them not as this like, don't pretend that you're some kind of independent body because you're not. I, you, I have, you know what? I have to disagree. I think they if, have... if they don't have the authority to ban and unban cards, then what are they doing? And they are just pretending, right? So either have them in the capacity that you have them now or fucking bounce. Well, like those then, are the options. Then say that they're in the capacity that they're in. Because well, they, they, they don't they do, now, though. Because they do say that they're not a governing body. They're not official. They're not, but they are. No, no, no. They're not Watsi employees. They are the governing body for the format but, that Watsi uses their, yeah. their, um, their ideas, their, their, their guidance on. Well, then they should be official humans at the company. No, I don't see I, how that changes any of what we're going through if, if, if they're official Watsi people or not. Because Without getting inflammatory the, and assuming that they're in collusion with oh, Watsi and insider trading's happening and oh, fucking... Ooh. I would no, because none of that happens. Like, I would love to see a proof of life with a jeweled lotus, but I'm not going <laughs> to... You know what I'm saying? I would love to see that, but that's not... That's and just me being funny. You know the what? The, hold on. The insider trading thing, it's been, it's been confirmed that the RC and the keg they were actually all in agreement and decided and were told that if they do pre-sell any of their stuff pre-bans, they will be eliminated from those governing bodies. As they should be. As they should be because, and I don't want to use insider trading because that's a, that's a legal term for a regulated market and this is not, not that, that <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so you can't, you can't give it the same kind of yeah. onus or cojones, but they've already thought of that and, and they're not trying to make bank and they're not trying to Lose, they're not trying to take money away from you. Now, I do agree with you. I feel for the local game stores that are sitting on a stock of these things that have since gone down. Now, it's not like a game store instantaneously picks up like a, a, a shipment or a stock of mana crypts like they yeah. do booster boxes, right? right. Oh, I'm just going to go to my supplier and order fucking 86 mana crypts and sell them instantaneously on pre-order with like when Duskmorn comes out. Yeah. That doesn't happen. So these these stores, just like collectors, just like players, accrue these over time and they appreciate over time because the format grows and the cards get older and more scarce theoretically and they gain value and you sell them for a profit. Yeah. Now that's harder to do because the cards are worth substantially less. Are they still in free fall at this moment? Yes. Yes. As we sit here right now, yes. Will they go to zero? No, because other formats that play them exist. Except for Jeweled Lotus. Except for Jeweled Lotus. Though it does count as a sacrifice in Legacy. And you can <laughs> play it in Commander Cube. <laughs> Nobody plays Commander Cube. No, not very many people play Commander Cube. Yeah. But my point is they won't go to zero dollars. And I actually saw open offers on Facebook today for like $200 raised foil Jeweled Lotuses. Now, that's not 500 but it's mm. still not nothing. Yeah. Right. And man, and those are going to go down. Like people don't buy those right now. Yeah. Don't buy them at 200, but in, in a month from now, what if they're at 300? They won't be, maybe they won't be, but maybe they will be. Yeah, I, I don't know. Be. Right. And we're not MTG finance guys or no. spec guys or whatever. And I certainly don't know how many copies exist out there and there's not serialized ones to fricking tell us that. Right. Yeah. Uh, what I don't, what I don't like about the situation, I think the most 
is people being so upset when their cards go from, and just hear me out, let's say $200 to $10, right? Big hit. Big hit. It feels like a big hit. Yeah. You weren't selling that at 200. You're not selling at 10. So you don't have the money either way. And I get it. There's a safety net if like you break your leg and you need to sell cards. Like I get that. If your electric heating thermostat wiring in your walls blows fire out of it and you have to get it fixed by an electrician, like what happened to me. Oh, I was going to say that seems ultra specific. The day before this ban <laughs> happened. This is act, this is actively a big hit. Like I've talked, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show, but like every new tattoo I've had I've talked about that. represents a high-end card that I've sold, you know? Yeah. Like that's where I get my kind of fun money, right? Yeah. And now that I'm I'm in a position where I had to do some massive car repairs and I had to think like having that safety net of like, man, I can sell some cards and yeah. make some of this back specifically had me heated up for a little while. Cause people say, well, you weren't gonna sell them anyway. Well, maybe I was. Well, Cause I was playing them yeah. cause I owned them and I yeah. could certainly not own them to not be kind of screwed when it comes to fixing things around my house in real life. I would bet that and you're in the massive minority there. I, I certainly am. And again, I'm acknowledging that I am in a yeah. position that not many people were in, but I, and I do, and I feel for people who did, because again, we're in a position where a lot of our high end singles and stuff come from, we run a show, we're influencers and we do get Ooh. a... The I word. I'm sorry. We do get a kickback from our business daddies at fusiongamingonline.com. And we do get cards from there for less monies because we get paid in store credit. Yeah. So some of these things do come from there. So the financial hit that we took based on our upfront investment is much less than the average human being that paid two, three, four hundred dollars for one of these mm. cards. Two things. And that, that, it just sucks when you, I get the, the, oh, you know. Yep. I never got to play my super cool neon yellow mana crypt. Ooh. You know, I never got to even play it. I played Ooh. the deck a few times, never drew it. And that just, damn. And now I won't get to, and that makes me sad. But I'm happy that I have the card still, but it still makes me sad. Commander Cube, baby. Two never things. Gonna, never going to play Two it. things. Draft can fuck off. People think that we're rolling in the dough. We ain't. No. We ain't. No. So that's why patreon.com slash CCO podcast. <laughs> very, very important because yeah. Fusion pays us shit. That's thing one. Yes. So if you feel like supporting and Commander Coco provides you value and entertainment and enjoyment, fucking please go to Patreon because it means a whole ton to us. Second thing, how come the opposite is not true when I tell you, I tell you, the proverbial you, anybody, yeah. the Sliver Queen you pulled out of a $3 booster pack in 1997 is yeah. worth $500. How come? I don't just run out and sell it. No, but, <laughs> but how come there's not this extreme emotionally positive um, response. How come when I tell you foil dolmen gates from Lorwyn yep. are like 110 each and you got like a play set of them and it's mm -hmm. like, oh fuck, there goes my electrical issues. Here mm -hmm. you go, whoever. <laughs> uh, take these cards and now I'll pay the electrician, yep. right? Like yep. th the same can be true. And that's the part that I have a, tr that, that I have a trouble with is... Well said. Yeah, is... Like these cards are sitting there in a deck or in a binder, unless you have very specific circumstances, like you actually had this week. And I didn't even know that. So yeah. I, I sprung it on them. Yeah. I, I feel bad that those issues happen to you. Yeah. I feel less bad <laughs> about, uh, or, or, or I don't feel any worse for you that the cards tanked in price Yeah, because you've got, I do have 17 stuff. million other cards that yeah. you could do the thing that you're talking about that you could have done with these cards, right? And and that's why the issue is complex, mm -hmm. is because maybe, and this is how nuanced it can be, maybe you've got an attachment to that Sliver Queen because it was in your first booster pack ever. Yeah. Maybe your other Sliver Queen, I painted for you. Maybe your other Sliver Queen, you lost your virginity to. Maybe your other <laughs> Sliver Queen, because you got four of them. I do. You, you, like you and Lenny bounced these guys in Calgary one time and it's a memorable thing and it sits up on your mantle like uh, tremors too. Yep. Right. And, and I don't know any of those things, even after the fact that you told me that you had a bunch of financial burdens this month. Yeah. Right. And when somebody is just flaming on the internet, because oh, yeah. that's what they do. I, I actually was talking to a guy in commander Cook comments on YouTube and I'm yeah. like, like I did to you yep. help me understand because the more that you and I can talk about this issue and people can talk and the more we say things like help me understand. 
why you're upset, the more we can work through the issue. And like I said, knock some of those rounded or around some of those sharp edges off. And while I'm not going to make you feel better now, I understand. Well, right? sometimes just yelling about it kind of helps. Like I was, I don't know yeah. if you know this about me, but I was lit up I yesterday when I got I home knew. and I was pulling those cards out of my deck. Oh, you pulled them straight away. Oh yeah. I got them right away. Cause I, I knew we were going to be recording today yeah. and I wanted to, even in, even through my haze of fucking rage i wanted to have something constructive did you drink a pile of bones beer offer, oh i sure did oh <laughs> i drank three of them <laughs> a, I, oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and i'm just i'm yanking cards out and you know what i did after that i, I relaxed yeah i just raged and sam was like i don't understand anything that you're saying but i feel bad for you mm. and then afterwards i sat down with my binders mm -hmm. and i sat down with my let them on fire what i thought was a chaff pile from duskborn <gasps> and you know what i did oh Filled in the gaps. Filled in what gaps? The gaps in my decks that were left by all the cuts I had oh. to make. Filled them in with new cards or old cards. Okay. And so I did something constructive. So on tomorrow's show, I'll actually have something to say that's like constructive and positive. Like more cards. That stuff that like oh. just. Oh, you just got to chip. Here's an opportunity for you to use some new shit to, to, uh -huh. to put them into your decks. And on the upside too. They're not super expensive staple cards that you're going to invent a whole bunch of money in and then they get banned out from underneath you. See, I got I to gotta get a few shots in. I got to get a few shots in. I like I like that. This is probably our longest pre-show ever. It's its own episode. Yeah, it is. But basically. I knew it was going to be. That's yeah. why I said, like, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that we've solved the problem. No. And anybody who started the show mad is probably still... They're probably still mad. Anywhere between, like, peeved and mad. Yeah. And and maybe maybe if we made them 1% less bad, we have to take that as a W. Hell yeah. Right? And and the people who wanted our opinions, like, I think they already knew that you were lit up. Yep. And I think that they already knew that I really... Weren't. I, well, <laughs> and, and you know, I say it on the show all the yeah. time, I don't really have a passionate, like, left or right-leaning response either way. That's why it's so terrible to talk to me about, like, <laughs> politics and religion and books and magic. It's like... Yeah, uh, I yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to listen and, and not let you vent because I'm asking strategic questions to help yeah. myself understand, but through that process, you get to tell me how you feel and why you were yeah. pissed and tell you, tell me about ripping cards out, fucking throwing them off your balcony, yeah. right? You think he opens up cards and throws them like when he, uh, just when opens, he opens up booster packs. You should see when I'm mad. You should see when they're banned. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke. I threw a card off a balcony in Vegas one time. Right in the pool. And got nothing on Uncle Brando. Oh, man. Uncle yeah. Brando's card chucking emporium. Yeah, that's me. Come on down. One more Mana Crips, 80% <laughs> off. <laughs> one thing I want to say just for logical consistency. When you're sure. talking about Sliver Queen, $3 pack, $400 card. Yes, sir. That also makes me mad because cards shouldn't cost that goddamn much. Ah. And that's how we've got here. And I've always believed that these cards shouldn't cost that much and it makes me uncomfortable when they are. And I would not be angry if these same two staples that were cut and their value ate shit, ate shit because they were just made on a common sheet and printed into every deck ever. Because mm. if my hundred and whatever dollar card goes down to five because everybody else can play with them, my special edition that I have or my foil is always going to mm. be worth a little bit like more. Like people who invest in beta duels. Right? Like it's just... I wish people could play the cards and I wish they weren't so expensive. Or, and so either way, I'm just like, God damn it. Like if you're going to oh, do yeah. this, leave it alone because fucking people in invest their hard earned money in this shit. And when I they can lose tell it you're all, they still get mad. I'm still, I'm still a little mad. I'm, I can still, still I'm trying to mad. be constructive. And, I'm, and most of it's because I keep thinking that, God, I keep thinking of that guy that was sitting in okay. Regina. There was a dude that sat in Regina. I, I wish, God, I remember his fucking name. But he sat in Regina the whole day. He yeah. played like one game that whole day because he traded in his entire life to buy a mana crypt that he didn't get a to play. A crypt? A mana vault. Whatever the mana fuck. Mana crypt. Like a, yeah. Mana, mana crypt. crypt. And he never got to play it. Oh. <laughs> because he bought it that day and now it's been, right? Like, Sucks to I, suck for that and guy. It, damn it. Like I just, I feel so bad for those people because for every guy like that, there was two other people that had it in the mail. And, yeah. that, and I hate that because well, it's, and you know it, what? It here's, feels bad. Here's here's a thing that maybe something like this could could um, here's a here's a potential positive that I already know places like Star City Games have is if you have a card and you've owned it or or it's been less than two weeks since you purchased it on their website, 
if it gets banned or restricted, you can send the card back and be refunded in store credit. Oh, wow. So maybe something like this triggers every major online retailer like Fusion and Face to Face, Star City and Card Kingdom and every, everywhere to say stuff like this because, uh, and, and not every mom and pop shop who's registered through TCG yeah. Player can do this, but maybe TCG Player, an online marketplace that does actually have a lot of money because they take a percentage of every sale mm. and they've got millions and millions of dollars in like liquid operating profit monthly, maybe they can help smaller sellers with this kind of thing, maybe. right? Maybe this eliminates people getting like jerked around when they try and buy an expensive card on Facebook Marketplace, right? Maybe people just don't do that anymore because they're protected more fully when they go to an online retailer, right? Yeah. So there's all these little, I'll call them evolutions of the game and of the landscape when when stuff like this happens, right? Every, every workplace rule is written in blood because somebody got their arm chopped off or lost a finger, or got their eyeball poked out with a grinding disc, right? This is the kind of thing that we're, <laughs> that we're living in right now. Like Uncle Brando got his, his wiener chopped and his eyeball poked out and is missing an arm because uh, three of his favorite cards were banned. <laughs> yeah. Right? And now, I mean, really, there's not a whole ton that we can do other than just let people know in a constructive way that we're not happy with these bans and, and talk to the people that say that they're the people that will listen, yep. go on to the commander RC discord and politely like sign the petition or go to Twitter. Yeah. Or, yeah. There or, are petitions actually yeah. circling oh, out there. If you're, if you're upset <laughs> about it, sign it, man. Like I had a guy tell me that him and a bunch of local game stores in his city are seeking legal counsel for all the money that they lost. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, there are people that, they, 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 unregulated, I, market. Yeah. unregulated market it's an unregulated market but as far as like retail price of things goes this is it this is a lot of zeros that we're talking about oh, yeah. and i mean this is going to be heated for a while but again don't take it out on anybody and don't stress up too hard about it because these things have a way of working themselves out i'm sure they'll just print jeweler lotus in the next Ooh, command it'll sack for five lotus right? yeah um and i'm dredged in Ooh. Jeweled or Lotus. Okay, I got 10. this. I got this. I got this. If you need to recuperate some of your funds, this is the last thing I have. If you need to recuperate some of your funds, check out the price trend on Mana Vault. And if you got any Mana Vaults, <laughs> sell, 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 stonks, stonks, yeah. <laughs> I think we should probably, we're going to sign this one off and we're going to head over to tomorrow where we're going to talk about some more constructive things. What decks did we have impacted? What did we put in them? Mm, Where do we go from here? Duskmorn. I got I got Duskmorn replacements for banned cards. You do too. Yeah, we're gonna live in the in the after the afterglow. I believe is what they call that when mm. a nuclear bomb goes off, but like the sky is still lit up. From yeah, the... this is uh, D Day plus one. Yeah, the day after tomorrow. How many more movie references can we make? Would you believe that pl Godzilla plus one is called plus one because like Godzilla plus one? That's like ten was the worst it could get. And then it's like 11, so plus one. Godzilla freaking is so far behind, he thinks he's first. That's right. Or he, I don't know. I'm just going to. They, they Godzilla is hard. Anyway, <laughs> you want to hit our theme song? Hit our theme song. <laughs> <laughs>